Alright, welcome to another video. This will be the start of your VS Code extension series and I'm pretty excited in particular about this video because I'm going to be trying out a different format for this one. I was thinking about how to deliver this content and I thought, why not let's do a tier list because it seems like it's a trend these days and it's also a good way of categorizing VS Code extensions since there are so many of them anyway. That said, I do realize that different people may favor different shortcuts depending on what kind of work you're doing. So this is just my tier list based on what I find to be useful. One thing to point out is that this first video is about the essential extensions that I think pretty much anyone will find useful in any general situation. In future, I'm planning to do more videos on VS Code extensions for other use cases such as for web development specifically, so do subscribe if you'd like to see more. Okay, let's go! Before we start, I just want to share a bonus tip which I think is really useful. I only just found out about this recently while preparing for this video and that is that you can actually search for extensions in VS Code by using the add symbol rather than simply typing in the search bar what you think you want. So with that, you can see many different categories such as the popular extensions if you're just getting started with VS Code or you can also go with your currently installed extensions which is really helpful if you want to just clean up the extensions that you have installed on your machine and if you scroll down you see that there are many other categories and even works for themes so just so you know Alright, so for the candidates for our tier list, I'm just going to go through them one by one since they're not arranged in any particular order. And if you're familiar with VS Code extensions, I've actually excluded those that are more web development related since not everyone does web dev, which will make those extensions an F for these people. And there will just be too many extensions anyway. So the first one here is bookmarks. Bookmarks is an extension that helps you make bookmarks in your code, which you can easily jump to wherever you are. Maybe I'll just show you an example. So let's say you're in your code and you want to make a bookmark at this particular location, what you can do is command option k and so you made a bookmark and let's say you're in a different file and you want to go back to that you can do command option l and that will bring you back to where your bookmark was so if you do command shift p and search for bookmarks you can see all the other functions that you have over here but i'm not going to go through all of them you can try them out on your own if you're interested and it took a while to get used to the keyboard shortcuts to navigate but even after getting the hang of it i don't really find it very helpful in my day-to-day -day work usually if i know what i'm looking for i can just do a quick command f and i'm done i think this extension is not terrible but it's not too useful as well so i'm going to give this a C, yeah, nah. Alright, well, next one we have over here is rainbow brackets. Essentially, what this does is it color codes your brackets so you can tell which ones belong together. So, as you can see, we have in this file over here, we have color brackets, color brackets. And the great thing is that it applies to just about any file you have, even your Python files and so on. And in fact, there's another option that essentially does the same thing that's called bracket colorizer. And so, there's actually two versions if you want to use this one but to me as long as the extension gets the job done it's fine one thing i do realize about this extension is that i don't actually pay that much attention to the coloring as much as i thought i would because i'm already using a code formatter so in terms of where this stands i think i would put it under just in case i would think this would be a good to have it doesn't really disrupt your flow so you can always just have it installed all right moving on to the next one better comments better comments does exactly what its name suggests as you soon realize with all these extensions that we're going to see it allows you to color code your comments for different situations so you can see that for important comments you can do star star in javascript comments and it also works for python code as well so in general all you need to do is to remember star for important comments exclamation for deprecated methods or warnings and the one i use most frequently is the to do so that i can mark out and find very easily what is the work that needs to be done i saw someone recommending this and i've been using it ever since with no regrets so i'm going to say this is good stuff over here that's an a next on the list we have github so this is the one that you see in the tier list but what i actually want to refer to here is a group of github extensions so one of them being github pull requests over here so this essentially allows you to manage your pull requests very easily and you can take a look at the demonstration over here i haven't really tried this since it's in preview but it looks pretty helpful another one is github history and so this allows you to view and search your git log with the graph and all the details and here is a demo of what it looks like so you can see the graph and the changes that are being made but the one that i find really useful is this one called git lens so git lens is like git history but even more powerful so essentially it allows you to track who made what changes and compare any changes to your files side by side which is a way better interface than doing a git diff in your terminal so for example if i make a change over here and say hello then you can see in my source control over here it should pop up as a change if i save you see that this pops up and you can click on it and you can see that this is all git lens so git lens allows you to see in green what are the changes that have been added and if you delete any lines it will show up in red and from here you can very easily see what changes are being made you can add these files and make a comment message and you can imagine that if you have many other files it's going to really make your process of version control much smoother another feature to show is that under the commits here you can see if you click on it and expand currently i have no commits but if i go ahead and make one right now so 
let's see right here okay now it's loading you can see that we have the previous commits as well and you can click on each of these commits and even see what were the changes so it's really impressive in the sense that you don't have to actually leave your IDE you can just stay in VS Code and look at all the changes made to your project recently without having to go into your web browser and navigate to your repo now one last github extension that I would like to show is github copilot which was only recently released and it's still in preview I was lucky enough to get access to this preview github copilot is basically an AI pair programmer released by github and open AI just about one or two weeks ago and it essentially makes code suggestions to you based on the code and comments you have in your file I won't be going through what it looks like and how it works here but if you're interested i have a whole video on this whole topic which i'll link in the description below so all these considered i'd say github extensions are really amazing and it's a bit unfair because there's a number of them in this category but i'm going to just chunk this as our first s extensions you cannot live without moving on we have vs code icons vs code icons is basically just a file icon theme so it sets the styles of the file icons you see in the sidebar over here i don't think this extension is particularly impressive simply because it just adds icons to your folders which people may or may not find distracting so you can see if i just do a quick setting of this theme you can see that we have icons for the files over here and if i disable i will need to reload and you see i have my default theme back again Personally, I don't feel that they help me with finding the files that I want faster. So I'm just going to put this under the D category, which is meh. Okay, so next one would be auto import. So when you first search for auto import, you might come up with this. And this is not actually the one I'm referring to because this only works with TypeScript and TSX. The one I actually installed was the one over here. So auto import for ES6, TS, and JSX as well. So this is great for JavaScript developers. Whenever you add some new code so let's say i'm in app.js and i want to add a component over here or rather let's say i let's say i forgot to do this import so i delete this if we again we want to add and upload a component you can see that once i clicked enter you can see that the import was automatically loaded over here so really useful let me undo all of those changes one drawback of this is that it only applies to javascript and typescript so for Python users, I'm not sure if there's a similar extension out there. If there is, please let me know in the comment section. But otherwise, this is quite good stuff. So I'm going to put this as an A. Okay, next one is MDown or Markdown. Markdown is an extension just to give you quick previews of your Markdown right within VS Code itself. Personally, I only use Markdown for README files and most of the time I do that on GitHub itself. So it's a bit hard for me to get used to writing Markdown in VS Code. Here you can see all the available commands so you can create table contents and so on. I do think it can be potentially useful for some people so I'll give it a C. Yeah, but nah. Okay, now we've finally come to Prettier. So Prettier is one of those extensions that I'm pretty sure almost everyone would have heard of. If you haven't already installed it, I highly recommend doing so because it really makes life so much easier. Prettier can basically automatically format all your code in your file without you having to worry about anything. So if for some reason you have your code all messed up or unindented like this, and you want to just quickly resolve all of it in one shot then to fix this all you need to do is to save a code and you can see that everything automatically formats itself i find it extremely helpful when i'm copying and pasting code so with prettier i just copy paste do a save and everything is nicely formatted automatically very impressive so i'm going to give this an s one of those i just can't lift it up all right next we have code runner so code runner of course helps you run code but how does it do that it does that by enabling this play button over here which you can click on to simply run your code so it works for many languages so java python the main languages essentially let's say you have a new file say a javascript file and you want to just create a variable and then you want to console log it and you can see i've suggested this because i'm using github copilot so that's pretty useful and now i can click the play button you can see immediately we get the output over here so very convenient rather than you having to open up your terminal and actually type in the commands and i think it might particularly be useful for beginners who are getting used to an IDE. If you have a play button like some other IDEs then it will make things much simpler for you to be able to run your code when you're first getting started. And you realize that I didn't even need to save the file over here. So you can just simply create a new file, type in some code and then run it on the spot. So it's really convenient but one thing I would say is that I don't actually use this very much in practice. I think this has quite limited use case. It's just a convenient tool if you would like to use it. So I'm going to put it as a B, something that I will have installed just in case. Next day is live server. So Live Server launches a development local server with live reload features. So for static and dynamic pages, you can see that if you have a HTML file, you can simply click on the go live button at the bottom. So for me, I have it over here and then it will automatically spin up a live server for you over here at the right side. So there are shortcuts to start and stop the server and so on. I haven't really used it a whole lot, so I can't say too much about this. But frankly, I don't really see a need for this to have this installed since the tools I'm working with work well enough for me. So I'll give this a D, it's pretty meh. Next up, we have setting sync. So setting sync is supposed to synchronize your settings across multiple 
Apple devices or multiple machines and it works for snippets, themes, file icons, launch, key bindings and so on. Basically the idea is to make you feel at home whichever machine you're on, which sounds like a great idea but for me I pretty much only use my own device and even then it's not that important to me that my settings are the same no matter what device I'm using. So if I'm considering whether I will use this or whether I have this installed in the first place, I'm going to have to give another D over here. So this is pretty meh. Okay, the second last extension we have is spell checker. It's funny because I never thought I would need a spell checker since we already have things like autocomplete and 10 cents, right? But when I installed this just to see what it would look like, I surprisingly ended up with quite a few typos which I didn't expect in my web application. So in the end, I'm actually quite relieved that I decided to try it out. One thing that's annoying though is that if over here I have a P tag and I have Amazon, and currently I don't have the extension enabled, if I enable it, you can see that this is fine. If I type in some gibberish, let's say code domi, and you can see that it underlines this. So, I mean, if let's say this is your company name, then you wouldn't want this to be marked out as misspelled. So one way to fix this is you can right click and ignore the word. And if let's say you have many of them, I can see I have eight problems. If you want to ignore all of these, you probably need to go in here and then step through all the instances where you have misspelled words and then ignore them one by one. So I find that too much effort, which is why you notice that I have it installed, but I had disabled it just now. For me, I would have it installed just in case so that's a B for me. Last but not least we have the Vim extension. So this is a Vim emulator for VS Code and you can see you can install it, customize the settings and so on. For those of you who don't know I've actually made a video about the Vim extension, how to set it up, how to use it. So if you want to find out more I'll put the link in the description but essentially it affords you the Vim functionality in VS Code. Initially I thought this would be great because I can apply the shortcuts that I'm familiar with right in the VS Code IDE. But as time has gone by I realized that I'm actually using less and less of this extension because VS Code offers a variety of keyboard shortcuts which I find really convenient as well. Even for things which I thought could only be done in Vim, like creating a new line below, it turns out there are also ways to do that without Vim. So it's getting harder for me to find reasons to use the Vim extension. All that said, it's actually very easy to just toggle the extension on and off. So currently you see I'm in insert mode and if I escape out, you can see that now it's in normal mode and to disable this Vim extension, I can do control option V and you can see that now at the bottom we have Vim disabled. If you're on Windows, I believe the command will be alt control V, but do correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section below. So control option V is what I do from time to time. So I think this is going to be more of a B, another just in case extension for us. So this is my tier list of VS Code extensions. Did I get any of them wrong? Let me know in the comment section below. I would love to hear your thoughts and also how you would rank these extensions yourself. If you found this video useful, do give it a like and share it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.